I'm Heather Contreras, the superintendent of PVUSD. And just to align us to our mission and vision in the district, um, at Pajaro Valley Unified School District, our vision is every student will graduate ready to share their unique skills and abilities to be a positive contributing member of their community and their world. And we're committed to cultivating a nurturing environment where every student thrives academically, socially, and emotionally, empowering them to flourish in a dynamic and evolving world. We want to keep that in mind because as we make decisions, our decisions, want, we want to make sure they align with the mission and the vision. And here are all of you, our wonderful representatives. We completely share our gratitude. Many people are very impressed with your dedication to being at these meetings basically every Wednesday. And I am show gratitude for that as well. So the purpose of our team, and this is the purpose statement that we created, is to make collective, or sorry, not the one we created, this is the overall one, to make collective recommendations to the Board of Education on how we use our resources to best serve students and maintain fiscal solvency in the face of declining enrollment over the next decade. Woo. Um, and <laughs> just a reminder that all of us, we probably all won't talk, but hopefully we will all be before the board when we make our recommendations to the board in January. So our team norms that we all established together and that we're gonna ask that we all engage in this evening is that students are our top priority in decision making, that there is equity of voice on this team, that we listen to understand, don't listen to respond, be brave and ask questions. Know that this is a safe space where people are empowered to use their voice and feel comfortable sharing. We need to honor the diversity of community and assume positive intent. And then we have our problem statement. We launched the problem statement at our last budget meeting and then we got a little bit of feedback and I said, okay, we'll give us some more and then we'll take it back this time because yesterday, last meeting we had a pretty packed agenda. Uh, our problem statement that was crafted from everyone's input is PVUSD is facing a significant challenge due to declining enrollment and loss of one-time pandemic funding. To address this issue, we must reprioritize and reimagine our services to scale effectively and maximize available resources. Our goal is to maintain high quality educational offerings while ensuring equitable access for all students. And to achieve this, we must implement transparent, and we took off strategies because that was a comment we heard, ultimately positioning our district for success in a sustainable manner. So do we want to replace strategies with a different word. Implement transparent strategies or do we just want to have strategies and not transparent? I think the comment we got was that transparent strategies, what's that? What's that mean? Just strategies. Just strategies? Jenny did that part? Okay. Jenny's gonna edit right here in the moment. Oh, to achieve with transparency. Okay. Ah, to achieve this with transparency, we must implement strategies. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Here, implement strategies. Oh, implement solutions. And then put after this, to achieve this, put to achieve this with transparency. Just take out the one, you, the part you just typed. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So with those adjustments, are we okay with that then? We don't wanna read too much into it. I think one, one thing that we know is we're all here because we wanna be transparent in decision-making and we know we have to make decisions around budget reductions without hurting our instructional programming. But these were all the words that all of you used that first night. 
Okay, we're kind of good with that? Do we want to do fist to five? So fist, I'm not okay with that. That's terrible. Five, it's amazing. Everything between zero and five would be acceptable unless it's a lot of ones. So on three, fist to five. One, two, three. Five, five, fives, fives. Fine, Nellie, you have to be the four. Fine then. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and the so next slide was just that we all agreed that we would use fist to five uh, to reach consensus. <laughs> so we utilize that already tonight. All right. So we agreed to engage in a seven step problem solving model. I uh, underlined step number two because we are still at step number two where we're gathering data and we're analyzing it prior to really looking at our potential causes um, and then what we might do next. And then as we make our decision, these are the district goals, our current goals as adopted by the board. Uh, and we want to make sure that we're aligning our decisions to the goals. So if at any time we're making decisions that don't feel comfortable to someone, one way to check those is, whoa, 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 hold on. Are we aligning these back to the goals of our district? Uh, we also have to consider our LCAP goals. Our LCAP goals are our local control accountability plan that highlights here's what we're going to do, the strategies and actions we're going to take to help support our students, and here's how we're going to fund them. So we can't just ignore these. We do have a plan that was written. That plan can be revised. It has to go to the board for a revision. So in the course of this, if we're looking at that and going, ooh, wait, hold on, um, we can we can look at a revision, but we do want to try to stay aligned to this. So those goals are college and career readiness, positive school culture, supporting foster youth, supporting students who receive special services and students with disabilities, supporting multilingual learners, and then we have some equity multipliers which include our community day school, new school, renaissance, and virtual academy. All right, and then we said our core values. What were the core values of this team that we were going to use to also guide our work? And we, we all um, devised these together, and this came from the work from our meeting one. So we, we decided we wanted to always be student-centered, that we wanted to ensure equity and access, that we wanted to prioritize the core educational goals, which included district goals and LCAP. And then we also wanted to look at our long-term investments. Like what does this mean in the long-term? Will this have a payout for our students in the long-term? Not just thinking short-term needs. All right, so tonight uh, what we shared and is it's in our um, agenda as in like what are we doing each of these sessions tonight we said we would be looking at our programs and our services mainly our service contracts and our consultants we are going to examine ones that specifically were brought on during covid with ESSER funding so that will be the core of tonight We'll be presenting information. You will have time to talk and share. We're not making any decisions yet tonight. It's, it's really just looking at here's what we've done and some things for you in the next two weeks to think about or ask questions about or say, hey, we need some more data on this. Okay, so I want to give you a little bit of background about COVID funding. How many of you have heard the term COVID dollars? Pretty much everyone, maybe. If, if you haven't heard COVID dollars, you may have heard this term as well, ESSER dollars. How many of you have heard ESSER dollars? Okay, they're one in the same, it's the same. So when people say COVID dollars, it's the same as ESSER dollars. Basically what those funding, what that funding source was is that when during COVID, when things were very dark and dismal, um, our federal government recognized that we were going to be needing extra supports uh, to help us through the pandemic. And so we received many dollars, every single district in the nation did, to help through the pandemic. And they became known as COVID dollars. Um, they actually stand for Elementary and Secondary Education Recovery Fund. So that's what ESSER means. 
we love acronyms in education, don't we? <laughs> um, so that so that's what that is, and those are the dollars we're specifically going to talk about tonight. ESSER dollars came in three different funding like lump sums. There was ESSER one, ESSER two, and ESSER three, and in total, our district received about a hundred million dollars in ESSER funding. That's a lot of money. <laughs> over the course of three years, yeah. So the funding source was one-time funding. So when we were given those dollars, we were told you're gonna get this one time. This is not an ongoing funding source. This is meant to help you and your district and the community through the pandemic. Okay, so um, some of the allowable expenditures for ESSER dollars included facilities. And um, it seemed like a strange thing. Why would we do facilities to help us with the pandemic? But we needed to improve ventilation to help people not to get sick. And so a lot of the facility dollars were for upgrades like our HVAC system, so our, our ventilation, our air. Um, that's a very costly expenditure and we were very grateful for those dollars. Um, some of the other one-time expenses included personal protective gear Remember all our masks? We were buying masks for employees, for our students. We bought in um, hand sanitizer, all sorts of ways to ensure safety for employees and for students. So dollars went to that. Um, we also realized there were many, many families who did not have access to Wi-Fi. And schools became virtual and we had to have Wi-Fi. And so the dollars were able to be spent on accessing Wi-Fi for our families. Um, we did, we're not in a one-to-one -one environment, and so our students needed Chromebooks. So we were able to buy and update our technology for our, our students and for staff as well who are working from home. Um, and then we also were allowed to add additional personnel to help as students started coming back, and we recognized a couple of different things. One is our students came back with grave social-emotional needs. The pandemic took its toll on everyone. People lost lives and students were isolated. Many different things happened that needed social emotional supports. Uh, we also I needed additional personnel because our students had experienced learning loss. And so we looked at things like uh, intervention teachers, um, different instructional aids were added at that time. We're not gonna talk about the personnel tonight, but I just want to give that overview of how these ESSER dollars were expended. So I want you to talk a little bit with your partner sitting next to you and just a brief thing like, what things of COVID do you remember uh, that you thought might have been funded out of this, these funding dollars? Maybe you weren't aware of anything, but maybe you were like, wow, all of a sudden my student is getting X, Y, and Z. So just talk real quick about some of your memories of what you remember for COVID funding. If any time I make a mistake, correct me, though, because it's recorded for posterity. Yeah, get pizza. <laughs> no, but you know what? If there's like a Diet Coke, that would be awesome. Yeah, thanks, Jenny. That would be awesome. No, for Okay, what did I miss? What can someone remember that I didn't say about our COVID spending? Katie. I was thinking the furniture, so any classroom yes. space that uh, didn't have furniture that would support social distancing needed new furniture. So that ended up being a lot of sites because at the time we were shifting towards collaborative learning. So teachers were incorporating tables to be able to have four students per table and we had to get away from the tables and towards desks again that and chairs mobile. yeah oh good one that's a good one anyone else covid dollars gus we had cleaning supplies for our maintenance department to do cleaning and the plastic uh, dividers for every classrooms oh and the in dividers. the office in the office you know the dividers the in front plexiglass. of the office 
and what else? That was pretty much it. Taping stuff off or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tape taping for taping things, things off. off. Uh, mm -hmm. Painting marks of how far, six feet apart for every student at every site. Signage, yeah. Anyone else, things I missed that you can remember like, oh yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Um, yeah, air it, purifiers. Go ahead. Sorry. I was wondering about the the Chromebooks. I know Chromebooks for sure, but the when it adjust like the upgrade to the touchscreen Chromebooks was that ESSER dollars or was that separate? Do you know, Jenny? I don't know off the top of my head, but I'll see if I can find out tonight. We are going to have a place to put questions in a little bit here too, so you could add that on. I just know that like the tech services like when they buy things they're always looking for like what's the best deal and what's the newest device so it wasn't necessarily that they were buying touch screens with the ESSER dollars because they could but just that was the yeah. next available device so all of them hopefully as they're getting refreshed yeah. will be as that. the whole world had a demand on some very specific things <laughs> yeah anyone else any other things you can remember Stephanie Oh, really? Oh. Part of the custodial protocol to fog the room every night. And we've actually, we're still oh. using those when we have, we had a pink eye outbreak. So <laughs> just decided They're to still coming in handy. Um, <laughs> thermal scanners, too. We had oh, those, yeah. those two. The thermometers, two yeah. Side. Yeah, so you'd walk, walk through and get oh. your scan. And, uh, so it was a really great source of funding for us to be able to do all of those safety measures. So we had some, a lot of dollars were spent. All right. So when these dollars came out, many districts engaged in a process to get input on how the dollars should be spent because there was a lot of dollars that even after buying all the Chromebooks, there was still money to be spent. Um, and so this district, just as kind of a, a walk back in time, um, did do a very thoughtful process around how the dollars would be spent. And so there were thought exchange uh, that occurred, like what uh, a, a receptacle where people could put in their thoughts about, I, I think we need this, this is something on my mind. There were two ESSER community surveys sent to families. So families were surveyed, what supports and helps do you need at this time? There were two virtual town hall meetings in English and Spanish. I forgot about how often we were using, you know, Google, everyone was doing that. Holding a town hall uh, via virtual meeting was probably quite challenging, <laughs> but we did those. A staff survey was sent out to ask staff what uh, needs they had. And then there was a special board meeting and study session so that the board could review and approve both the ESSER 2 and the ESSER 3 plan and then budget with an opportunity for the community to give input in. Nellie. And what we did um, in planning up to all of that is the um, various stakeholders, so CSEA, PBFT, and management met in contingency groups and we had oh, various contingency team planning to do that too. On. Great job, really nice. And I believe that there were also conversations that people were holding with the superintendent to give input at, during that time as well, hopefully the contingency groups as well. So there was a lot of input into how um, these dollars would be spent. And now we find ourselves in a place where we almost have to engage in that same process, but in reverse order. And so it's the same, um, we need input now as the dollars leave us, there were still some strategies we were engaging in and we have to make some decisions about how do we walk that back and, and what is important to the community um, in doing so. And so tonight we're gonna look at, I, like we said, we named a lot of different places things were expended. Um, furniture's all done and paid for, the, um, Masks are all done and paid for, the HVAC has been put in, but there were services we engaged in that are still ongoing that we need to take a look at. So tonight, that's what we're gonna look at specifically is just those services. So specifically, we um, looked at ways to re-engage our students. When our students were at home and isolated and then came back to school, 
it wasn't really looking to be the most thrilling experience for our students. Uh, they had a hard time coming back. And so one of the strategies most districts engaged in was how do we look to re-engage our students? How do we meet the new set of needs that our students have now? Um, and what can we do to help the school environment um, be better for them? And so in PVUSD, the, some of the re-engagement services that we looked at included EAOP, and I'm not gonna tell you what these are yet. I'm gonna give you some time to see if you know what they are, um, which is also known as Gear Up program, El Sistema, Food What, the Latino Youth Film Institute, also known as the Youth Cinema Project, Life Lab, PVPSA, the Parent Engagement and Wellness Center, and Virtual Academy. These are re-engagement services that are currently still in our system that we just want to um, talk a little bit about tonight. So what I want you to do is with your partner talk about, see if you can identify what each of those services provide at um, your school or in your community. All right, we're gonna call it back. So I'm gonna let you fact check yourself now. So, <laughs> so EAOP, uh, which is gear up through UCSE, is um, the College and Career Center specifically in our high schools. Um, they focus on our secondary students and their mission is to help students now realize their potential for college. Um, when they graduate. El Sistema is music programming with a big focus on performance. El Sistema actually performed um, on October 4th when I presented my State of the District. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. R made like chills on my arms. The music was like so beautiful. It was fifth graders making this music. It was really nice. Um, Food What is a program that was kind of brought on to be a, like a tier two or three programming for students. It's had, there's a beautiful farm um, right outside Coralitos. They work with students in like farming, uh, learning salesmanship because they do sell what they produce. Um, they do cooking. It's a really great um, kind of combination of learning business and mentoring for our students at the same time. Um, Latino Youth Film Institute, it often called Youth Cinema Project, is a mentoring program where we have um, people push in during English language arts classes at different schools uh, to teach about um, cinema and how you write scripts and what script writing, li writing might look like. Um, there's a student that I spoke to recently at PV High School who was really started that program in Cesar Chavez. He's a senior now and applying to UCLA for their uh, film program, which is, is really hard to get into, but he is really phenomenal, so learned a lot through that. Uh, Life Lab was our outdoor garden instruction. PVPSA provides a host of mental health services through clinicians that come to the schools and are able to see students. We have our Parent Engagement and Wellness Center, which I got to be part of their ribbon cut cutting, I think on the very first day I started in May. Um, and it offers, it's, ho it's um, housed at EA Hall and it offers a variety of supports that parents could access right there at the school campus. And then we have our virtual academy, 
Virtual academies became very popular during COVID as we were bringing students back from distance learning. There were families and students who, for a variety of reasons, didn't feel comfortable or were not able to come back to the regular school setting. And so they still continue to this day to receive their education online. And we still have virtual academy happening. So that's what those are. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through each of these services um, to show what was the funding level that we were working with. Many of these, um, as Sue Gralty just pointed out, our principal at New School, uh, many of these programs were in our district prior to COVID. They were at a different funding level, and as we had ESSER dollars to help our students re-engage, we were able to work with our partners to grow the programs. And so we're gonna go through what that looked like and how we grew those programs, and then we'll talk a little bit about where those programs are now. Did I see a question? No, okay. Okay, so Gear Up, an educational partnership through UCSC designed to increase the number of low-income students who graduate from high school and prepare for and succeed in post-secondary education. The program started in 2017-2018 we do have a current contract that will end in 2025-2026 school year, so next school year. In 2019, when we began funding this, so the program started in 2017-18, we did not start working with that program until 2019-2020. And the contract amount was $1.4 million. We have a contract amount now that's budgeted with them and it is for 1.6 million dollars and just so everyone knows as part of my work um, in preparing for tonight's meeting i met with every single one of our partners to talk to them that we would be sharing this information tonight so they're all aware that we're having this discussion and um, that we're thinking through what some next steps might be el sistema El Sistema is an after-school program providing music instruction, activities, and performance opportunities to students. We have a current contract with El Sistema through 2024-2025. I believe a little bit of the funding was happening during the school day at some points um, in the last four years. That is no longer the case. It's now after school. So in 2019-2020, Prior to COVID, um, our funding amount, our contract with El Sistema was $31,000. Our current budget is $878,000, um, roughly, here, hit or miss a little bit. Some of that funding has now been moved to our after school programming. And so our after school programming funds are helping to pay for that contract. Um, so we kind of were able to shift some of our COVID dollars and programs we brought on. No, not quite. Yeah, but um, so anyway, that's that's where where that is. For for this one, EAOP. I'm gonna go back. Can we go back to EAOP? I don't know if my clicker went. Not working. Oh, there we go. Um, this is all happening in the school day, and that's from the general fund. Okay, Food What. Food What provides students opportunities to grow, cook, and eat fresh and healthy food while addressing local food justice issues. Their current contract is through the end of this school year. Um, it, that program didn't exist in this district uh, prior to COVID. We brought it on in 2022 and is the current amount is $479,328. And some of that is funded through our after-school programming. So we can, am I still the controller clicker? Can you click it forward for me? I think my, I don't know what happened. Let me see. Yeah, now I have it back. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. The Latino Youth Film Institute, which is also known as Youth Cinema Project. The teachers work in the classroom, integrating language arts with filmmaking. 
students showcase their films at an annual festival. The festival happens in May. It's a really big deal. Um, in 2019, 2020, pre-pandemic, we were spending $326,000, and now we are spending $850,000. That is also from the general fund, because that does happen in the school day. And oh, I want to go back to that, which I can't go back. Um, that contract is through 25. Oh, can you go back one? I want to make sure I bring that through 24, 25. Okay. Next one. Now next one. Okay. Garden education. So we have garden education that was happening during the school day. Uh, we started that in 2022. We were paying one point almost $5 million for that. We are now paying a million dollars for that, but it has all moved into the after school programming. PVPSA, this stands for Pajaro Valley Prevention and Student Assistance. It provides mental health services and counseling for our students. The current contract is through 2024-2025. And in pre-pandemic, we were spending $409,000. And our current spending is $1.9 million uh, with PVPSA. Some of that is being budgeted in different funding sources, but about $1.6 million is from the general fund. And I'm sure you all remember about general fund and restricted and unrestricted dollars from our sustainable budget meeting number two. Um, who? With PVPSA? Yeah, the contract is through the end of this year. Yeah. And then we have our Parent Engagement and Wellness Center. This is the one that I talked about being at the ribbon cutting in my first week here. Uh, this wellness center is located next to the EA Hall Middle School campus. Uh, the services that are provided are through Second Harvest Food Bank, Healthy Start, mental health clinicians through PVPSA, and a mental health clini clinicians through PVUSD. Uh, great services for families. Um, I've been there multiple times. There, there are always people there accessing the services. Uh, that was started in 2021, 2022. Um, so it was all, this was really as a result of COVID and it's the current budget for that is $1.3 million. And that is from the general fund. Yeah. And then we have our virtual academy. Our virtual academy is a school that opened during COVID. Like I explained earlier, it provides online learning and service for families during virtual learning. And the district spending pre-pandemic was non-existent because we did not have this need uh, prior to COVID. And the current budget is $1,076,428. From the general fund, yes. All right, so what I'd like to do now is have a little bit of discussion about this um, in some small groups. So in 2020, like I said earlier, the superintendent held meetings to determine COVID spending. How would we determine that? What would we need for our students to help them be successful through a really hard time in education? And now we're looking at the same data, but really prioritizing how do we make the reductions. We are not making re any um, recommendations tonight, but when we see where we were uh, spending some of those dollars for services at least, we can see that we were um, looking in certain categories. Like I kind of think of it as programming. And next time we'll talk about our overall programming um, in the district. But for this time, it's just kind of looking at those services and contracts that we have with our partners. So teaching and learning is the overall core of what we do in education. The educational system exists to help students basically in a very um, summarized way read, write, and do math. That's our core mission. We, we need to have our students performing well in reading, in math, 
uh, science, of course, but read, write, and do math is kind of the core of, of public education. Um, along the ways, though, we always want to make sure students can access their education. And a variety, we're all human beings, we all have different needs um, and different challenges. And so school districts look at how do we help each individual child to best access their education. And sometimes that means students need additional supports and services to be able to have basic needs met so that then they'll be able to learn at a high level. And so that's when we partner with people or we find these different services that we need in, in um, employees that we might hire. But our core is the teaching and learning program. We've also looked at tonight college and career connection. How do we help students to know what are their next steps after they leave our system? Uh, we have also examined enrichment opportunities. So enrichment opportunities that we provide beyond the learning program include things that engage students. Um, so like field trips or um, athletics, uh, different things that we know, outdoor activities, things that we know are important for students um, in terms of, of enriching their lives. We also looked at our educational options. So what different options do we provide for our students who might not be able to access general education? So um, virtual academy is a great example. There are some students who learn better from the comforts of their home or through a computer, not surrounded by lots of people or other reasons why they might want to learn at home. So we provide educational options. Um, some of those educational options would also include like interventions. And we're not gonna really discuss that tonight, but just to kind of highlight what do we mean by educational options. Uh, we also provide family resources um, like the wellness center and other things too, where we're trying to help the whole family and the whole child, which is really our, our mantra in this district. So how do we look at providing medical supports, socio-emotional supports, informational supports? Like if you're a parent, how do you know where you can access a variety of supports for yourself um, or your family? And then we also look at food security. So we, we feed our students at school, but what happens when they go home? They might not have access to nutritious and healthy food, so how do we help to provide that? Uh, we have an array of services for mental health so how do we um, help students who are having mental health crises? How are we also helping the families? And then we have a very strong VAPA program. So that's visual and performing arts. So our music programming. And like I said, next week we'll look at some of our specialized our, our programming. Um, but how are we looking at music and drama and choir and art design and the things that uh, we know students also need to be um, whole? A lot of times, um, in traditional educational settings, you would not see some of the visual and performing arts until students reached high school, where those electives are actually mandatory in order to graduate or go out to college. Um, we've added them into our programming, which is probably a good thing. But when we look at all of these as a community, different communities do value different parts of the educational system over another. and when we understand what those core values are, it makes it easier to make decisions collectively. Like what are the things as a community we say is number one? Everything cannot be number one. Um, some communities really value technical education. So instead of like the arts or the music or drama, you might see a lot of coding or STEAM activities. So it's just really kind of what does a community feel their children really need? Uh, so tonight what I want you to do is in a small group and we're going to give you a place to go and we'll, we'll count off how your grouping um, will be. We want to have you in your group kind of rank order these areas, teaching and learning, career and college, center, college opportunities. Where, what is the number one in your group? What is the number two in your group? What is the number three? Or maybe you want to start with the last and work your way up. But have a healthy discussion about what do those things mean and where are they in our programming and where, where should they be in our programming. And if we were looking to have to reduce, where would some of those reductions be? And not like, um, I don't think what this group wants to do is that or should maybe do, 
and I guess it'll be up to you, but um, a, an approach where it's just get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of this. It may be something more like we're reducing the entire programming, but rank ordering these might help when we start to have to think about those pieces and the actual reductions. I want to say again, we're not making any recommendations tonight. What we're trying to do is arrive at our community values tonight. Any questions about that? Okay, I'm gonna put you in groups of five and we'll put go into different sections of the room so that no one is getting distracted by another group and you are going to rank order in terms of importance how these would go for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, try to reach consensus. You might have to use fist to five. It might be really tough between like number one and two or three and four, uh, but have a healthy and hearty discussion and talk about, oh, well, no, I know this is in my school. We, we want that discussion to come out, okay? And remember, you're representing the community group that you are have been selected by. So if you're a parent, don't just try not to just think about your own children, Try to think about community inputs that you hear. If you're a teacher, try to think about what other teachers say. If you're an administrator, you're representing administrators, CSEA, you're thinking through, okay, what would my members say? Um, that way we try to be representative, not just of us as an individual, okay? All right, let's get into the groups. Let me see. Do you want to self-select groups of five or do you wanna create your groups of five? I don't know. I kind of feel like maybe. I I wonder if mixed is better so that then a teacher might say, "But well, hold on, here's something I know because I'm in the classroom." Yes, he's a teacher too. Okay, so then with under that, guys, let's do this. Um, Mike, why don't you go in that corner? And Nellie, why don't you go in that corner? And then why don't you go in this corner over here? And then principals, if one can go with Mike, one goes with Nellie, and one can go with Emily. And then Gus, Diane, if you guys could separate. <laughs> and then coordinators, district level, we need one. Stephanie, can you lead a group over in that corner over there? We'll probably end up being six then. Okay, and then I think that leaves our community partners. Community partners, make sure you're not in the same group. And then parents, if you go choose a group to be in. And then I'm gonna come around with the supplies you might need. All right, if we can all return back to our seats over here, then we'll talk about our next steps. That took even longer than I thought. That took longer than I thought. That's kind of good. Though. Yeah, it's good. Actually, I think we're pretty aligned, which is really nice. Okay. Oh, for the parking lot? Just a reminder, as we go through the next steps of this evening, we do have the parking lot over there. There's post-its and feel free at any moment to just get up, move over to the parking lot and um, write down whatever questions or maybe it's that you need more data. I had a couple questions like, well, how many students get served from this program? So if you need more data like that, then um, we'll bring that back to the next meeting. This was a really hard exercise. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to, to prioritize, but also I think to keep it under the lens of not linking it to something right now yet that we're doing, 
but just looking at us as a community, what do we value? Um, I was saying to one of the groups that in my previous district, there wasn't a lot of art, but there was a ton of STEAM things. And so different things do emerge for different districts as a priority. All right, so it looks like I'm looking around at posters. Jenny is typing into our slide deck and what we call this particular slide is survey says. What does the survey say? Um, and so it looks like group one, and we're not, what group is group one, Jenny? Which one did you call group one? <laughs> she went to the most aesthetically pleasing poster. <laughs> nice job, group one, you made it number one because your poster looks so good. Good job, Karen. <laughs> All right, so what Jenny's gonna do is she's going to enter your rank orderings into a table so we can see then all together what it looks like and how aligned are we. So it looks like group one said number one is teaching and learning and our core ed programs. Number two would be visual and performing arts in elementary. They, they specified in that group. Um, and then enrichment for secondary mean and it looks like calling out athletics. Number four, I'm, I'm noticing there's no number three, so it's like twos are tied. They didn't want to make the call. <laughs> number three and number four, um, now noted as number four, five, yeah, are mental health and parent resources. I think we're going to have to. We're gonna put it, let's just put it in the order they put it, because that's probably subliminally what you meant. <laughs> um, and then number five, career and college. And number six, educational options, with the exception of academic intervention. So please, like, don't, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good, that's a good call out. Okay, and Jenny, what are you calling group number two? Over there? I think I missed Jenny. Resources. Yeah, that was um, one, that would have been five. 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 Number two, visual and performing arts, sensing some likeness. Number three, enrichment opportunities, staying the hold with the other team. Number four, mental health. Number five, now we get a little different, career and college. Number six, educational options. And number seven, family resources. So one through three the same and Four, five, six, a little change up. Four, five, six, seven. All right, group number three. <laughs> All right, we have group number three. Oh, thank you, Andrea. <laughs> All right, it looks like we have number one, teaching and learning. Number two, VAPA. Number three, enrichment opportunities. Number four, mental health and family resources. So it looks like number four and five. Sorry, four mental health, five family resources. Number six, college and career. And number seven, well, they actually called out a virtual, yeah, <laughs> uh, which would be educational options. <laughs> okay, and then we have our, our last poster, which looks like it's teaching and learning. Nobody can agree on the numbers. I can tell. <laughs> Oh, we have clouds of what we grouped together, and we did not actually feel like we could agree on a number. And yes. minus number one being teaching and learning. Yes, all agree. And we yeah. put that these three, four three. things in that ball deck for cloud are number one. Yeah. Essentially. 
like really, really important. But we also felt like everything in the red cloud was also number one. And this is important to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I added my number. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Because but that was the assignment. But we're having some feelings. We're having feelings because. Yeah. Uh, it's hard because we agree that it was hard to, uh, we all agree that it was hard to prioritize. I think it's really, I, I love this side of us here to separate the secondary with the elementary mm -hmm. piece mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. because it is deeply different than like my child who's in elementary. I don't prioritize their college prep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this parent who has a student mm -hmm. in high school mm -hmm. deeply like drives the mm -hmm. kids to the school. But I don't prioritize my kindergarten. In college and career, you know, so yeah, it's yeah, just, it's just it's so right. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't so. know if we need to do like a paper rock scissors situation yeah. over here, but like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like, it, but like, all right, I have one number. I so say, like, okay, I, I, I but I do I see. Yeah, I do see though on your poster, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I see an attempt. So we're going to go with that. Yeah. So number one is teaching and learning. Number two, college and career. Number. Yeah, it just helps us. Okay. Yes, I it's think you're right. I, right. Yeah, there's a battle. <laughs> 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 a dance off. <laughs> uh, no. Where it says career prep, um, like what what are you thinking college and career is? I think like knowing the details of what each thing consists of is helpful in seeing where it goes on that chart. Like what's it what is what exactly is included in college prep? Is it I mean, because you're it sounds like if you're taking High school, they're the high school general core education is going to prepare them for college. College and career might just introduce them to let's go visit them, or I don't know. I don't know exactly what it entails. Yeah. Um, or what they but, are okay. doing. Sorry, um, they they see at the grades of the students. They talk with them and say, hey, what are your expectations after high school? Are you planning to attend to a college? Well, let's see your grades. Oh, you are, your GPA, your general education, English, uh, social studies, depending what you are going to, mm -hmm. is what you need to focus. We can help you. If you are behind in your homework, here is the center, stop by, we can help you to raise your grades. To, it's not only a field trip. Right, that's what I'm saying. saying. So, like, mm -hmm. maybe just knowing what it encompasses helps to kind of put it in a space. No, I think that is really valuable. And what, what happened in our group, though, is that, like, <laughs> multiple of us felt so strongly about all of this. We were making <laughs> So when we say career and college prep, are we just talking about it in the frame of reference of EAOP and gear up that funding, funding that? I think uh, for the purpose of this, what makes it hard is when you do start going into, well, what are we talking about? What you start looking at, well, what program's going? And that's not what we want to do. What we sure. want to do is just look at our total kind of programming and services that this district has historically invested in and then kind of prioritize them in terms of, I think one, one thing that this group is gonna be tasked with is we can do anything, but we cannot do everything. I just, I, and so it's kind of looking at, so what are the things that in our community are really really important and college and um, career prep can mean a lot of things it could mean our avid programs right. we have avid it could mean um how do we invest in our counseling our counselors at the high school level 
Um, it could mean, do we start doing interest surveys with our students at a younger age so that they um, learn about themselves and their learning and where they want to go next? Um, some communities have like a whole college going culture where every business in the community adopts a college and you go into Subway to buy a sandwich and you see that Cal Poly everywhere or something. So it's it can be lots of things. It's just saying like who this exercise was, who are we? And that is going to help us as we do look at these things like maybe someone says, OK, um, that contract, that contract's gone. And someone else might say, but wait, hold on. We said this thing was important to us. Maybe we need to think through that a little bit. So th that's what this was for. Um, maybe that helps this group to refine uh, their thinking. It is definitely all important. And I think one thing that ha happened during COVID, and this is important for all of us to understand, is we had a lot of funding to do a lot of things in our schools. And um, we don't have that anymore. We, we can't do all of it. We have to prioritize what is our core values and our core mission for our students. Um, and it's kind of hard, like when we got used to a certain level of services, we had a certain level of services for four years. It's hard to, to pull that, that back but we are going to have to. So this was to just help us to frame, like, where do we start? Does this group want to? Um... <laughs> it's a good discussion. Guys. Jen Jenny did, it looks like Jenny put in your numbers that you had. And, and let's look at, maybe this will make it easier, is she, Jenny programmed this because being the programming wizard that she is and the budget person and number person that she is, she's got it so that we could see collectively what it's turning out like. So in this ranking, she did the numbers that you could see in the total, number four, number 19, number 12. Um, so this is like a game of golf where you want the low score. The low score means you're number one. Low score on this is your number one. So then she did the rank. And it looks like in the rank order, number one is teaching and learning. So basically what we would be saying in this is our primary focus in this district is our core instruction, English, reading, math. And one group did say, but that has to include interventions too. How do we help our kids when they're not doing great? Our number two collectively looks like it's VAPA. Our number three looks like it's enrichment opportunities for students. Our number four is mental health. Our number five is career and college. Our number six is family resources. And our no number seven is educational options. Educational options being like different opportunities for our students outside of our core educational programming. Um, okay, is does that is how do you feel that the group, the group? <laughs> mm -hmm. It is really consistent, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're okay with that? Okay. So as a group, this is what we're saying is, is kind of w will be something that we look at. So our next meeting, what we plan on doing is bringing to you our total, like kind of what I think of as our, our programming packages. Like in these areas, what are our expenditures as a total, if we look at everything. And so that's what we'll be bringing back. And I think when we partner that, with some of our services and then looking at, at our everything that then we can start looking at where we might uh, want to think about, just think about reductions, not making recommendations yet. Um, okay, can we go to the next slide? I don't know where the clicker went. Oh, it's hiding behind my drink. 
Well, we have to go back to slideshow first. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> That's how we're going to decide this. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have a parking lot of for questions and more data that we might need. I think this was helpful for us in looking at, at some of the things we might start to consider. We still have more data to show. I think some of the data we need to show you are our recently released CASP scores. So we'll bring that in the next, in two weeks from now. Um, that presentation will be going to the board on October 23rd so that we're all aware of how our students are performing. That's something we have to consider. Um, there may be other data you want to see, and that's what the parking lot is for. We're going to use tonight's information at some point, not yet, to make recommendations to the Board of Education. Our next meeting, like I said, is going to be look, to look at that overall programming and where those expenditures are. And then in December, based on outcomes from these different meetings, like what we did tonight is data for Jenny and I to use. Um, Jenny and I, using all these different meetings and all the data we collect, will come forward with five or six or seven different options based on what everyone here is saying. And then in December, we'll look at those options and of those six or seven that, that Jenny and I come up with, um, which will have like kind of a menu of here's where we see it, based on everything that's said here. Um, then you'll choose maybe an A, a B, or a C option that is palatable to this group to bring forward to the board. Okay? Is everyone feeling okay about that? This is hard stuff. <laughs> Those are, um, you know, the, and I think that's why it's nice to have a collective group with lots of different voices to help with these recommendations because it puts all of us in the decision-making process, like understanding um, the difficulty of this. So I appreciate all of you and your willingness to uh, be a part of this and participate. And I think what we have everyone here again, so that's awesome. So I still wanna know if there's any data you need. Of course, you all have my email. So if it's not here with you in this moment, uh, you can email me and say, hey, I need this, or you can email Jenny too. Um, and we'll make sure we provide that and work it into our next presentation. Uh, but for now, really what we're looking at is you get a Wednesday off next week. Woo! Is that great? Yeah. No, you don't get a Wednesday off. You don't get a Wednesday off, <laughs> Gus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we have to talk at that one. <laughs> so, so, so some of you get a Wednesday off. Uh, and some of us will not. Um, the next one, we'll look at that whole total district programming. We will bring some enrollment information to you as well as some staffing ratios. It's going to be a really heavy lift the next in two weeks because it'll be a lot of information. And we'll probably do a very similar exercise like this with that next information that we bring. Um, and then we will look in, as we come in come off of that piece at the organization of our schools. Like what are some other considerations we have to think about in terms of our school, our school facilities? Um, maybe by that time, no, we won't. Yeah, <laughs> maybe by that time we'll know, but we will not. Um, but we will have to have some discussions too about that because that is part of our funding. Um, and then we'll look at how do we attract and retain our students and staff to make sure that if our teaching and learning environment are number one, are we engaged in activities and um, uh, recruitment and different strategies that keep our teachers here uh, and help to attract the best and the brightest? And then um, in the next meeting after that, we'll kind of look at those recommendations. We'll narrow them down. Jenny and I will have some plans for you to look at. And then the very final meeting, we'll be reaching consensus on what will be presented as options for the school board to consider. It's a hard job that they will have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Any questions right now? So yes, just one. Would it be possible for the future meetings to get the printouts of the side deck? Because I find it useful. 
I didn't know it was two oh, yeah. three, so we didn't do it. Absolutely. Sorry. Thank you. Ab we can definitely do that. Yeah. Yes. And then just so you know, all the slide decks that we use, we do post onto our website along with the recording of these meetings. Yeah. Um, but yes, I can email that. The parking lot. I can bring it back. We can do it every single time, and and then I'll take what's here tonight. But then you can email if you're like, hey, another question that I thought of. Another question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have one, yeah. If you like, wake up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, comments? <laughs> no. <laughs> comments. Anything. Okay, well, look at that. We are out of this meeting a little bit early. All right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.